A tragic incident, a young life lost, a community in shock. The death of Nex Benedict, a non-binary teenager from Owasso, Oklahoma, has sparked a national conversation about the safety and inclusion of LGBTQ youth in our schools. On February 7th, in the heart of what should have been a safe learning environment, a confrontation unfolded that would end in tragedy. Nex was involved in a physical altercation in a school bathroom at Owasso High School. This wasn't a chance encounter or a random act of violence. It was an incident that had been brewing, escalating until it reached a point of no return. In the midst of the chaos, a glimmer of humanity emerged as other students present in the bathroom, aided by a member of school staff, intervened to break up the fight. But was this intervention enough? Was it timely? These are questions that continue to hang heavy in the air. After the altercation, Nex was seen walking around the school, a testament to their resilience, their strength. But beneath the surface, things were not as they seemed. The school, assessing the situation, decided that an ambulance wasn't necessary. Yet, in a move that now seems prophetic, the school nurse recommended that Nex undergo further medical checks, out of an abundance of caution. Sue, Nex's mother, was in for a shock when she learned about the incident not from the school, but from her child. Frustrated and concerned, she called the police to the hospital, seeking answers, seeking justice for her child. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, questions began to swirl about what exactly had transpired in that school bathroom and why. In the hours following the incident, Nex Benedict was able to provide their account of the events. The police body cam footage, now released to the public, captures Nex's own words, painting a haunting picture of the events that transpired at Owasso High School. Nex described an encounter with three girls who targeted them based on their appearance and the way they dressed. The bullying, it seems, didn't stop at mere words. The mockery continued in a place presumed to be safe, the school's bathroom. Nex recalled the girls asking questions like, why do they laugh like that? A clear indication that the bullying was deeply personal, aimed at Nex's very identity. In response to the taunts, Nex threw water on the girls. It was a defiant act, a refusal to be silenced or shamed for being who they are. But this act of defiance was met with violence. Nex described a terrifying ordeal where all three girls attacked them. A fight ensued and Nex told the police they were beaten on the ground until they blacked out. The raw honesty of Nex's account is chilling. It reveals the severity of the bullying they faced, a cruelty that went far beyond words. It shows us that this, this wasn't a random incident, but a targeted attack on a teenager who dared to be different. Despite the trauma of the incident, Nex's voice was heard, shedding light on the bullying they experienced. The day after the incident, on February 8th, the situation took a heartbreaking turn. Nex's mother, Sue Benedict, found herself in a position no parent should ever face. She called emergency services, her voice laced with fear and concern, reporting that her child's breathing was shallow and their eyes were rolling back. She voiced a chilling premonition, whispering, I hope this ain't from her head. They were supposed to have checked her out good. The urgency of the situation escalated quickly. Paramedics arrived at the Benedict home and immediately started performing CPR on Nex their expert hands working tirelessly to revive the young teenager. Despite their best efforts, the situation grew dire, and they had to rush Nex to the hospital. Imagine the frantic drive, sirens blaring, medics in the back, striving to keep the life slipping away from the teen. It's a scene that sends chills down one's spine, a scene that will forever haunt the memories of those involved. Upon arriving at the hospital, the unimaginable happened. Nex Benedict, a 16-year-old non-binary teenager from Owasso, Oklahoma, passed away. The news sent a shockwave of grief through the community. The death of this vibrant young individual who had their whole life ahead of them was nothing short of devastating. Nex's death wasn't just a personal tragedy for the family. It was a heartbreaking reminder of the consequences of unchecked bullying and violence in schools. It was a wake-up call, not just for the community of Owasso, but for the entire nation. The loss of a young life sent shockwaves through the community and the nation. As we delve into the aftermath of this tragic event, we're left with a poignant reminder. We must strive to create safer environments for all students, 
regardless of their identity. In the wake of Nex's death, a police investigation was launched to determine the cause. The Owasso Police Department took on the task, revealing their initial findings through a statement. They conveyed that preliminary autopsy information indicated an unexpected revelation. Nex did not die as a result of trauma. This information, while crucial, was not definitive, leaving room for further exploration and examination. In the pursuit of a more comprehensive understanding, the police department turned to toxicology tests and other medical examinations. These tests are a standard part of any thorough investigation, particularly in cases where the cause of death is not immediately apparent. They can provide critical insights into the circumstances leading up to an individual's death, potentially revealing evidence not visible to the naked eye. The police department committed to sharing the results of these tests once they were available, promising an official autopsy report. This report would not only provide a detailed account of Nex's physical condition at the time of death, but it would also give crucial context to the events leading up to their passing. This commitment to transparency was important. It showed a willingness to fully uncover the truth surrounding Nex's untimely death. It was a reassurance to the community, to Nex's family and friends, that every effort was being made to understand what had happened. Yet, as the authorities delved deeper into the investigation, the community was left waiting. Waiting for answers, for clarity, for closure. This period of waiting was marked by a palpable tension, a collective holding of breath, as the community sought to make sense of the tragedy that had unfolded. But in the midst of the waiting, a shift began to take place. The focus began to move beyond the immediate circumstances of Nex's death. The conversation began to expand, to encompass broader issues and deeper questions. As the community awaited answers, the focus turned to the broader implications of Nex's death. The death of Nex Benedict was not just a personal tragedy, but a societal one, sparking a wave of concern about the safety of LGBTQ plus youth. In the wake of Nex's death, the Rainbow Youth Project, a nonprofit that supports LGBTQ plus young people, experienced a staggering 500% increase in calls. 70% of these callers cited Nexus incident as a source of distress. This surge in calls is a stark testament to the fear and anxiety that permeated the community following the tragedy. In Oklahoma, where Nex lived and went to school, the situation for LGBTQ plus youth is particularly grim. Anti-LGBTQ plus legislation is rife, creating an environment that is hostile and unwelcoming. This has led to high rates of mental health issues among LGBTQ plus youth in the state. In fact, nearly half of these young people have considered suicide. This is a chilling statistic that underscores the urgent need for change. The death of Nex has highlighted the impact of these policies and the wider societal attitudes they reflect. Young people, simply trying to navigate their identities in a world that is often unaccepting, are being left vulnerable and afraid. Nex's death is a stark reminder of the very real consequences of this fear and discrimination. But it has also brought the issue into the national spotlight. People are starting to question the policies and attitudes that led to such a tragedy. They're beginning to recognize the urgent need for safer environments for all students, regardless of their identity. Nex's death brought uncomfortable realities to the forefront, igniting a call for change. It is a call for a world where young people like Nex are accepted, supported, and safe. A world where no young person feels so isolated and afraid that they reach out to a crisis center in desperation. A world where being different is celebrated, not feared. This is the world that Nex deserved, and it is the world we must strive to create in their memory. In response to Nex's death, Individuals and institutions alike were forced to confront their roles in creating safe environments for all students. The Owasso School District, where Nex was a student, expressed their devastation over the loss of life. They publicly committed to fostering a safe and inclusive environment for all students, regardless of their identity. Furthermore, they pledged their full cooperation with the ongoing investigation, seeking to dispel speculation and misinformation surrounding the case. Meanwhile, the Benedict family, Grappling with their unimaginable loss issued a call to action. They pointed to the devastating effects of bullying and school violence 
describing Nex's death as a preventable tragedy. The Benedicts urged school, local, state, and national officials to join forces to determine why this happened. Their message was clear. Those responsible must be held accountable, and measures must be taken to ensure that such a tragedy never happens again. The family's call for accountability and prevention resonated with many, highlighting the urgent need for systemic change. The incident forced a reckoning on the part of schools and communities, sparking a broader conversation about the safety and inclusivity of our educational institutions. It served as a stark reminder that schools must be places where all students, regardless of their identity or expression, feel safe and accepted. As we remember Next Benedict, we are reminded of the urgent need to foster inclusivity and safety in our schools for every student. The tragic loss of Next Benedict is a stark reminder of the urgent need for societal change. This incident highlights a disturbing reality. Our schools, which should be safe havens for all students, are failing those who don't conform to traditional gender norms. It underscores the urgent need for more inclusive environments where everyone, regardless of their gender identity or sexual orientation, can learn and grow without fear. The increase in calls to organizations like the Rainbow Youth Project following Nex's incident paints a sobering picture of the distress experienced by LGBTQ plus youth. It's a distress that can lead to devastating mental health issues with nearly half of these young individuals contemplating suicide. This is not a statistic we can ignore. It's a call to action. In the face of such adversity, it's crucial that we as a society take a stand against bullying and violence. We must implement anti-bullying measures that explicitly protect LGBTQ plus students, and we need to ensure these measures are enforced. Schools should not only be places of learning, but also spaces of acceptance, understanding, and respect. But creating safer environments goes beyond policies and measures. It involves fostering an inclusive culture that celebrates diversity and promotes understanding. Education plays a key role here. By integrating LGBTQ plus history and experiences into the curriculum, we can help dispel myths, break down stereotypes, and promote empathy among students. Furthermore, it's essential for educators and community members to work together. By forging strong alliances, we can protect all students, making sure that tragic incidents like the one that took Nex's life do not happen again. We need to ensure that every student, regardless of their identity, feels seen, heard, and respected. In honor of Nex Benedict, we must strive to create a world where every student feels safe, accepted, and valued for who they are. This is not just an aspiration, but a necessity. Let's honor Nex's memory by working tirelessly to make our schools and communities more inclusive, and let's ensure that Nex's story continues to inspire change long after the headlines fade.